The Beechcraft Heritage Museum, a distinctly original, one-of-a-kind, living and working aviation museum that traces the lineage of the Beechcraft family of airplanes. The museum began life as a staggering museum foundation, incorporated in October of 1973 under the auspices of the Staggering Club. In April of 2007, the museum became the Beechcraft Heritage Museum. This change reflects the museum's commitment to promoting aviation education and preserving the heritage nurtured by generations of enthusiasts of all Beechcraft models from 1932 through the present. The museum is situated on a picturesque campus-style setting adjacent to the Tullahoma, Tennessee Regional Airport. An attractive blend of authentically restored early American log structures and modern museum quality construction. This 60,000 square foot facility currently houses 36 aircraft. In addition to many aircraft artifacts, original pieces of art, and aviation memorabilia for the enjoyment of the members and visitors. The museum collection has been accumulated over many years through the donation and loan of aircraft and artifacts for display and enjoyment of those who visit. In this video, you're going to see museum features such as the Walter Beach Hangar, Louise Thadden Library, Founders Room and Lobby, Faust Hangar, Olive and Beach Gallery and Chapel, and the Beach Center. Aircraft exhibits you will see are the first Beechcraft Staggerwing, the 1929 Traveler Mystery Ship, my favorite. Old number one 1925 Travel Air, one of three pre World War II twin Beach 18s, Around the World A36 Bonanza, Model 2000 Starship, and many more Beach, including Barons, Dukes, King Air, and a T 34. The Beechcraft Model 18, or Twin Beach, as it, it is also known, is a 6 to 11 seat twin engine low wing tailwheel aircraft manufactured by the Beach Aircraft Corporation of Wichita, Kansas. Continuously produced from 1937 to November of 1969, over 32 years, a world record at the time, over 9,000 have been built, making it one of the world's most widely used light aircraft. Sold worldwide as a civilian executive, utility, cargo aircraft, and passenger airliner on tow wheels, nose wheels, skis, or floats, it was also used as a military aircraft. By the late 1930s, Beechcraft management speculated that a demand would exist for a new design dubbed the Model 18, which would have a military application and increased the main production facilities. The design was mainly conventional for the time, including twin radial engines, all metal semi-monocoque construction and fabric covered control services and tailwheel undercarriage. Less conventional was the twin tail configuration. The Model 18 can be mistaken for the larger Lockheed Electra series of airliners, which closely resemble it. Early production aircraft were powered by either two 330 horsepower Jacobs L6s or 350 horsepower Wright R760Es. The 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R985 became the definitive engine for the pre-war C18S onwards. The Beach 18 prototype first flew on January 15, 1937. The aircraft has used a variety of engines and has had a number of aircraft modifications to increase gross weight and speed. The Beechcraft model G17S was manufactured between 1946 and 1949 and was the end of the line for the famous Staggerwing. Based on the popular model D-17S, over 20 modifications were incorporated, creating arguably the most elegant variant of all. These included a new engine installation with a fully enclosed cowling and a manually controlled cow flap, more steeply sloped windshield, and a large vertical stabilizer. In addition, there were new landing gear doors, an updated instrument panel, and new interior furnishings. Introduced in 1946, the model G-17S featured a list price of $29,000.
due to its expensive labor intensive and fabrication and assembly process. Beechcraft Model 35 Bonanza was introduced a year later in 1947 with comparable performance at a cost of only $7,975. As a result, only 20 out of the originally planned 50 units were ever produced. The aircraft before you is Beach Constructor Number B3, originally sold through distributor J.D. Reed Company of Houston, Texas to J. Hillard Hancock of Mobile, Alabama. The original purchase order was received on March 14, 1946 and the aircraft delivered by August 12, 1946, registered as November Charlie 80304 with the name Jackie painted on the cowling. It is currently owned and operated by the Parrish brothers Charlie, Robert, and John Jr. This daggering is arguably the most recognized in the world due to its presence at many events during its past history. The Model 17D was designed for the Jacobs L6 engine which developed 330 horsepower. A total of 60 Model F-17D aircraft were manufactured between 1938 and 1942, making this the second most popular by number produced. The Model 17D was slotted into the Staggerwing production line between the less powerful E-17 series and the more powerful D-17 series. Characteristics of these versions which were developed in 1937, changes to the wings included a new airfoil, relocating the ailerons to the upper wings, and adding flaps to the lower wings. The longer fuselage structure provides the increased wing stagger and allows for struts or braces on the tail. Displayed beside this aircraft is an original snow ski similar to the type used by Admiral Byrd on the Antarctic Expedition. The wheels and tires would be removed and the ski is mounted to the axle. The landing gear must remain in the extended position at all times with the ski attached. Charlie Foxtrot Bravo Kilo Oscar has been restored to appear as it did when Prairie Airways of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada took deliver of it in July of 1938. It was the 11th example built of the Beach Model 18 and as the model suffix D indicates was powered by Jacobs L-6MB engines of 330 horsepower each. Only six Model 18Ds were manufactured. This aircraft's cabin accommodated seven Prairie Airway passengers and airmail, linking four western Canadian cities with Regina, where numerous connecting flights were available on Trans-Canada Airlines. The good performance and relatively low operating cost of the S-18D enabled Prairie Airways to submit the winning low performance and relatively low bid for the first Canadian feeder airmail service contract. As indicated by the S and the S-18D designation, this aircraft was certified to be operated on skis, wheels or floats. Prairie Airways operated their S-18Ds on wheels and skis but never on floats. Of the 29 pre-war civilian Beach 18s, only three still exist. The Veneral Beach 18 has hauled it all, and we mean anything and everything, whether for honest commerce or things more nefarious. This workhorse of the air has made its contribution to every sort of human enterprise imaginable. And of no less importance, we must commend the special fraternity of pilots known as Freight Dogs. In their heyday, the Beach 18 Freight Dogs were a fearless, swashbuckling lot who savored the challenge of severe weather, rarely saw the light of day, and didn't mind bending the rules when required or desired. They nocturnally populated the cargo ramps from Fort Lauderdale to Taipei and beyond. One sentiment they virtually all had in common was the will, drive, and determination to reach their destination on time with their cargo load intact and undamaged. The tradition of real men and women carries on even today as freight dogs traverse the planet nightly, hauling the same freight loads as yesteryear, plus thousands of tons of iPhones, laptops, video games, sushi-grade tuna, Tesla wiring harnesses, and anything and everything contrived in the 21st century. Construction of the Beach Model 18 ended in 1970, with the final Model H18 going to Japan Airlines. Through the years, 32 variations of the basic design had flown. Over 200 improvement modification kits were developed. In one case, the aircraft was modified to a triple tail, tri-gear, humpbacked configuration and appeared similar to a miniature Lockheed Constellation. Another distinctive conversion was carried out by Pacific Airmotive as the Pack Arrow Tradewind. This featured a lengthened nose and accommodated the tricycle nose wheel and the Model 18's twin tail fins were replaced by a single fin. 
Late in 1936, Ted Wells and the Beach Engineering staff initiated a major upgrade program to keep the Model 17 in production and make it more competitive. The result was the improved E17 series and the more robust and heavier D17 series. To improve elevator authority for three-point landings, the fuselage structure of the D17 series was lengthened from 13 inches to 16 inches. The airfoil was changed to a NACA 23012 section and the ailerons were relocated to the upper wing panels. Electrically operated plane flaps were installed on the lower wing panels. To compensate for the lengthened fuselage and maintain center of gravity limitations, negative stagger of the wings was increased to a little over 25 inches compared to the 23 on previous models. The very first Beechcraft. Walter Beach believed that the market was in need of a fast four place aircraft with long cruising range. By early 1932, Curtis Wright engineer Ted Wells was completing the design of a graceful biplane. The initial design, named the Curtis Wright Model 17, had begun in 1931 when Wells was still working at the Traveler factory in Wichita. The design incorporated many innovative features. The stagger of the wings in the opposite of the standard configuration of the day. This provides the advantages of improved pilot visibility and the aerodynamic effect of stall resistance. The lower wing stalls first, causing the nose to drop and gain airspeed. A split rudder was incorporated in the original design in lieu of the modern day flaps to slow the aircraft for landing. Interior appointments mirrored the luxury automobiles with nice fabrics, leathers, and woods. The main wheels retracted into the fairings to further reduce drag. After Wells finished the drawings, Mr. Beach attempted to interest Curtis Wright's senior management in producing the new aircraft. After being unsuccessful, Walter and Olive Ann decided to form their own company, along with Mr. Wells, K.K. Schull, and investor C.A. Yankee. Beach Aircraft Company was founded on April 19, 1932 in Wichita, Kansas. In 1921, Lloyd Stearman and Walter Beach worked together at Swallow Aircraft Company in Wichita, Kansas. By December 1924, they along with William Snook had a promising new design for a biplane. Stearman recruited Clyde Cessna to join the group. The new company, Travel Air Manufacturing Company Incorporated, was announced by its president Walter P. Ines Jr. on January 26 of 1925. The first Travel Air was built in a tiny 30 foot by 30 foot lease building in Wichita. In early February 1925, all materials for the first biplane were on order and en route to Wichita. Once the aircraft was finished, it was disassembled and towed by flatbed truck to the California section of town, southeast of downtown Wichita, and reassembled for its maiden flight. On March 13, 1925, Earl Beach was at the controls for a completely successful test flight. That same day, three speed runs were made clocking 96 miles per hour with a pilot and one passenger. With the same load, a thousand foot climb required one minute and six seconds. Takeoff tests were also performed with a load of 1,119 pounds. Takeoff roll with that load was 451 feet, with a time to climb to 500 feet of two minutes and three seconds. Walter Beach flew the Travel Air No. 1 to St. Louis for a demonstration flight to O.E. Scott. He was so impressed that he bought the airplane on the spot. Travel Air Model 1000 has a gross weight of 2,050 pounds, empty weight of 1,300, a wingspan of 33 feet, a length of 23 feet and 6 inches. The engine is a Curtis OX5 with 90 horsepower. Selling price originally was $3,500. Maximum speed was 96.5, landing speed was 38 miles per hour, and it held 35 gallons of fuel. Range was about 450 miles. Now on to my personal favorite in this collection, the Travelair Mystery Ship. This aircraft is the winner of the 1929 Thompson Trophy, the feature event of the National Air Races where unlimited aircraft com competed, including advanced Army and Navy pursuit models. Pilot Doug Davis of Atlanta, Georgia lapped the 30 mile closed course five times with an average speed of 194.90 miles per hour. During one circuit, he mistakenly circled inside one of the pylons. 
to avoid disqualification, he had to circle the pylon again. The second time, Mr. Davis pulled so hard that he actually blacked out. So to be absolutely certain, a third circle was required. Mr. Davis and the speedy racer had such a lead that they still won the race. After the 1928 National Air Races, engineer Herbert Rodden and his colleague Walter Burnham knew of only one way to compete in the unlimited class. A completely new design would be required and it would take at least one year to build. The two began sketching, calculating, and drafting in September of 1928, during the evenings and without compensation. When construction drawings were completed in May of 1929, Walter Beach was informed of their efforts. He immediately authorized two Model R racers, one with a Wright radial engine and the other with an experimental Chevrolet inline engine. The name Mystery Ship was coined by the local newspaper when they were unable to learn any details about the new project because it was being built behind closed doors. Mr. Beach loved the publicity and continued with the secrecy in Cleveland. Upon landing, both aircraft were quickly hidden from the public and not unveiled until time for their individual races. A crash in 1931 almost destroyed the Wright-powered racer. Another accident in 1995, after 64 years of restoration efforts, almost sealed its fate. This beautiful aircraft returned to the museum in October of 2010, a testament to the dedicated efforts of many talented craftsmen, the donations of over 100 museum members, and the leadership of the museum's board of trustees. This Traveler mystery ship is serial number one, and a total of five were built. Gross weight was 1,950 pounds, empty weight was 1,485 pounds, wingspan was 29 feet 2 inches, length was 20 feet 2 inches, the engine was a Wright R975 Whirlwind with 420 horsepower at 2,350 RPM. Selling price? Nobody knows. Cruising speed was 235 miles per hour with a landing speed of 70 miles per hour. Held 47 gallons of fuel with a range of 525 miles. The 4000 series Traveler was produced with various engine installations available, the most popular being the Wright Whirlwind J5C. The airplane was widely accepted for both personal and commercial use during the late 20s and 30s. Traveler was considered to be the leader of the general aviation fleet in its time. This Traveler 4000, serial number 1295, was restored by Mr. Tom Eanes of Grand Prairie, Texas, with its present Lycoming radial engine installation. Mr. Eanes won the 1968 Reserve Grand Champion Award at the Antique Aircraft Association Fly-In in in Indiana. It is currently owned by John and Charlotte Parrish of Tullahoma, Tennessee. This model 4000 Traveler had a gross weight of 2,400 pounds, with an empty weight of 1,485 pounds. Wingspan was 34 feet 8 inches, and the length was 24 feet 2 inches. The engine was a Lycoming R680-9 with 300 horsepower. Selling price was $9,000, maximum speed was 130 miles per hour, and landing speed 45 miles per hour. It held 60 gallons of fuel with a range of 550 miles. For the 1936 model year, Ted Wells and his engineering staff upgraded the popular B-17 design into the C-17 series that included four versions. The C-17 series was manufactured between 1936 and 1937 and incorporated a few minor changes from its predecessor. The angle of incidence of the horizontal stabilizer was reduced, a push-pull control on the instrument panel retracted and extended the landing gear, and two lights, one green and one red, indicated the gear position. Beechcraft C-17L November Charlie 16441, serial number 100, this one here, was delivered on April 10th of 1936 to C.C. Thorpe of Los Angeles, California. It was the second of six C-17L models produced and was powered by a Jacobs 225 horsepower L4 engine. Well-known aviator and movie stuntman Paul Mance obtained it for his charter service, United Air Service Burbank, California by 1940. The service was well known for flying Hollywood stars to Nevada for quick marriages and divorces. During World War II, November Charlie 16441 was used by the Civil Air Patrol and then returned to United Air Service after the war. In 
In the summer of 1933, Walter Beach needed a variation of the Model 17, which was less expensive to produce and would sell for less than $10,000, but still possessed more performance, fuel economy, comfort, and overall value than the competing aircraft could offer. Ted Wills began redesigning the basic Model 17, changing to a smaller engine, a much lighter airframe, and a fully retractable landing gear. The result was the B-17 series, which was in production between 1934 and 1936. Four versions eventually were developed. This model B-17L was the 19th model B-17 delivered in 1934. Commonly called the Straight 35, this Bonanza was the first off the line. The engine was the Continental E165, which developed 165 horsepower at 2050 RPM, maximum continuous. During production, however, takeoff RPM was increased to 2300 RPM. Aside from being a revolutionary new design, the Model 35 was the first medium priced airplane to offer complete night flying equipment, together with a low frequency radio and instrumentation for IFR flight. And standard equipment. Wiring and switches were even incorporated into standard equipment for flares just in case the owner might later decide he wanted to install them. The original propeller was of laminated wood with a metal covered leading edge, often referred to as a paddle prop. It had a large profile, a diameter of 88 inches, it was electrically controlled but not governed in the original version. The Beechcraft Heritage Museum received three generous gifts from trustee Bernie Heron and his wife Sarah. The first of these is a classic aircraft, a 1957 Beechcraft Bonanza. Dr. and Ms. Heron personally delivered their gift on April 2011 after owning the Bonanza for more than 42 years. On May 14th, the aircraft was formally accepted during the museum's first annual ABS fly-in, a joint event with the Wichita, Kansas-based American Bonanza Society. Museum trustee and past ABS president Ron Vickery of Port Orange, Florida, presented the gift on the Heron's behalf. The F-33A Bonanza No change in model designation from its 1971 counterpart, but the 1972 F-33A did experience significant changes. The interior underwent a major redesign which was extensive. Many structural changes had to be made in the cabin, particularly to the roof, to accommodate the all-new interior. The Wings of Freedom Bonanza, 10 Romeo. In 1985, Dr. Millet Harmon flew 10 Romeo into Moscow. Soviet colleagues late told Dr. Harmon of the unexpected approval for his flight came as Mikhail Gorbachev's first indication to the West that his leadership would be different. With the Moscow flight of 10 Romeo, Dr. Harmon became the adopted Soviet hero pilot with the title of Ambassador of Friendship Without Portfolio. He was nominated in 1990 and 91 for the Nobel Peace Prize. 
In 1990, 10 Romeo led a flight of Western Light aircraft from the U.S. to Moscow as the first half of an American-Soviet circumnavigation of the globe. The Soviets then flew from Moscow to the U.S. to complete the circle as the first flight of a group of Soviet general aviation aircraft to arrive in the United States. The flight over the North Pole occurred in 1986. The Beechcraft Model 50 Twin Bonanza, designed as an executive transport for the business market, it was developed to fill a gap in Beechcraft's product line between the single-engine Model 35 Bonanza and the larger Model 18. The Twin Bonanza is dissimilar to the Bonanza, being much larger and heavier and using more powerful engines, while in its earliest form having only half the passenger capacity of the Model 18. The Beechcraft Model 65 Queen Air and Model 90 King Air are both direct descendants of the Model 50 Twin Bonanza. All three aircraft share the same basic wing design as well as landing gear, flaps, instrument panels, and fuel cells. The Queen Air added a larger cabin to the design while the later King Air added turbine power and pressurization. Twin Bonanza production ended in 1963 while the King Air was under development. The Twin Bonanza was first flown on November 15th of 1949 after rapid development begun only in April of that year. The Model 50's type certificate was awarded in 1951 and production began that same year. The Kimmel Baron. During 1960, Piper introduced the new Piper Aztec powered by 250 horsepower Lycoming engines. Cessna was already building the 310 with the Continental IO-470D which developed 260 horsepower. The Beechcraft's reaction was the Model 55 Baron. The 1961 N35 Bonanza was being introduced with the 260 horsepower Continental IO-470N. Time was right for a new, more powerful Beechcraft entry into the light twin marketplace. The new Baron proved to be a very good fit. This Baron was the very first Baron built and was first flown on February 29, 1960. The Griffin Aerospace Lionheart is a kit-built airplane. The fuselage, wings, stabilizers, and control services are of a composite construction with carbon fiber used in the wing spar caps. The fuselage is made with a simple composite ring bulkhead and a typical composite shear box for the lower wing. These major structural elements are bonded to the inside of the fuselage shells. Griffin Aerospace joins the shells to the major ring bulkhead, firewall, and one of the aft bulkheads at their Huntsville, Alabama factory. Both wings are cantilevered, so no struts or wires are necessary. Lionheart's overall size is very similar to the stock stagger wing, but the cabin interior is lengthened slightly to provide six-place seating. Maximum speed is 232 miles per hour. Cruise speed is 210. The Beechcraft Starship really is one of the coolest airplanes ever built, in my opinion. Development of the Starship began in 1979 when Beech decided to explore designs for a successor to its King Air line of turboprops that would fly faster and carry more passengers. The design was originated by Beechcraft in January of 1980 as Preliminary Design 330. On August 25, 1982, Beach contracted with Scaled Composites to refine the design and rebuild 85% scale proof of concept. One of the significant changes made to the design by Scaled Composites was the addition of variable geometry to the canard. The proof of concept aircraft first flew on August 1983. This aircraft had no pressurization system, no certified avionics, and a different airframe design and material specifications from the planned production model 2000. Only one proof of concept was built and it, it was since been scrapped. Prototypes were produced even as development work was continuing. A system demanded by the use of composite materials as the tooling required is very expensive and has to be built for production use from the outset. Beach built three airworthy full-scale prototypes. NC-1 was used for aerodynamic testing and had an ejection seat and was the only Starship equipped with conventional electromechanical avionics. NC-2 was used for avionics and system testing and NC-3 was used for flight management system and power plant testing. 
NC-1 first flew on February 15th of 1986. The program was delayed several times at first due to underestimating developmental complexity and manufacturing learning curve of the production composite construction, and later due to the technical difficulties of correcting a pitch dampener problem and developing the stall warning system. By the end of development, the Starship had grown larger in cabin volume than the King Air 350, while having the same gross ramp weight of 15,010 pounds. Starship development cost $300 million. The first production Starship flew on April 25th of 1989. If you want to see a walk around of the Beechcraft Starship, I did one with owner Raj Narayanan, and you can find it here on my channel. The Super V Bonanza. The model Super V fits into the unusual category of aircraft on display in the Bonanza Baron Museum. The Super V is a conversion of the standard Beechcraft model 35, A35, or B35 Bonanza, and was issued a new type certificate 4A29. The aircraft was designed in 1956 by Mr. David G. Peterson, who at the time was chief pilot for Sinclair Oil Company in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The design was purchased by Bay Aviation Services Company, who also modified nine aircraft. In December of 1961, all tooling, engineering data, and type certificate were sold to Fleet Aviation Incorporated of Buffalo, New York. This particular Super V began life as a 1947 Model 35 Bonanza, purchased by Pacific Aircraft Sales of Oakland, California in July 23, 1947. Hammond Aircraft Company purchased it and applied for the airworthiness certificate on October 26, 1961. It later suffered major structural damage during a landing. George Felt of Felt's Flying Service used parts from a 1958 J-35 Bonanza to rebuild the Super V. George used it for charter flights until he retired. The Last Duke, November 410 Gulf. The Beechcraft 60 Duke has a nose wheel, retractable landing gear, and pressurized cabin. The two piston engines are turbocharged, and the turbochargers also pressurize the cabin with bleed air. The development of the Beechcraft 60 began in early 1965, and it was designed to fill the gap between the Beech Baron and the Beechcraft Queen Air. On December 1966, the prototype made its first flight. On February 1st, 1968, the FAA issued the type certificate. Distribution to customers began in July of 1968. The passenger cabin is fitted with a club seating and entry is by means of a port side air stair entry door in the rear fuselage. The Beechcraft A60, which came into the market in 1970, represented an advancement over the Baron. With an improved pressurized cabin, utilizing advanced bonding honeycomb construction, lighter and more efficient turbochargers, and improved elevators. This aircraft is the last of the 596 Dukes manufactured by Beechcraft. The aircraft's color scheme remains as it was delivered with the original factory interior still in place. The 1962 Wright B-95A Travel Air. This was Beechcraft's first light twin and later became the B-55 Baron. Beach built about 700 of this model from 1958 to 68. It has two light combing IO360 180 horsepower engines and cruises at a solid 165 knots burning 20 gallons an hour. This aircraft has been modified to the last model specifications with extra thick windows and insulation. It is so quiet inside, headphones are actually not necessary. The aircraft spent the first few years in South America as executive transport for Pfizer drugs. It had two HF radios with trailing antenna and two ADFs. The Wright Travel Air was donated to the museum by J.H. Wright on April 14, 2013. Reese Turbine Bonanza. This airplane was flown on four trips around the world by Dr. Bob Reese in 1992, 94, 99, and 2003, and it was donated to the museum by Miss Claire Reese. Immediately after being purchased, new for the sole purpose of making around-the-world flights, this aircraft began an extensive list of modifications. This included the conversion from its original piston engine, IL-550B, to the Allison turbine by Soloy Conversions, and the installation of a 138-gallon auxiliary fuel tank in the cabin, along with 90-gallon tip tanks. The selling price in 1989 was $225,000. The aircraft would cruise at 167 knots, land at 79, the range was 2,500 miles, and the Allison power plant produced 440 horsepower. 
The cutaway Bonanza was built for use as a courtroom display in defense of product liability lawsuits filed against Beach Aircraft Corporation. It was found that jurors were made up of people that had little or no knowledge of the construction of aircraft or workings of the internal combustion engines. Therefore, jurors had to be educated on the basic of aircraft construction so they could make decisions based on fact rather than fiction. In addition to the cutaway, a complete full-size fuel system with see-through fuel tanks was built. The trials this fuel system mock-up was used in were primarily water in the fuel allegations. Beach Aircraft Corporation, with the help of the cutaway Bonanza and the fuel system mock-up, won the lawsuits. This cutaway Bonanza was on exhibit at the Kansas Aviation Museum in Wichita, Kansas for a number of years. The Uncovered Staggerwing Late in 1936, Ted Wells and Beach Engineering staff initiated a major upgrade program to keep the Model 17 in production and make it more competitive. The Model E17 series was developed in parallel with the Model D17 series as a less expensive alternative. The Model 17 had virtually replaced the B17 and the C17 on a production line by mid-1937 and featured most of the technological improvements. This aircraft was owned by James Scott of Lansing, Michigan, and was involved in a takeoff accident in 1973. Dr. Scott donated the remains to the Beechcraft Heritage Museum. This promoted the formation of the Stagger Wing Employees Restoration Society of Wichita, Kansas, comprised of both current day Beechcraft heirs as well as many Beech aircraft retirees. They had undertaken the rebuilding of this aircraft as a donation to the museum and a memorial to Olive Ann Beach. The original intent was a complete restoration to a flyable aircraft. However, Mr. Beat suggested that a display without the fabric covering might be more interesting in a museum setting. In fact, the exhibit clearly illustrates the steel tube frame which is designed to carry all of the flight loads. Its wooden covering is for aerodynamic efficiency and aesthetics. Each wing is connected with two seemingly small diameter bolts, while the combination of landing gear wires, flying wires, and eye strut holds it in position throughout the flight envelope. Each wire is able to support approximately 7,000 pounds. When viewing the Staggerwing in this state, it is easy to imagine the effort required to restore one of these fine aircraft. It's very common for a restored Staggerwing to exceed 6,000 man-hours. The AT-11 was derived from the Beechcraft 18 series civilian aircraft with the specific purpose of training bombardiers and a more limited number of navigators and aerial gunners for their upcoming missions in the European and Pacific Theater of War and other combat areas. Virtually all AT-11s were outfitted to carry 100-pound Sandfield practice bombs. And after September 1943, the extremely top secret Norden Bobsight and C 1 automatic pilot, whereby the bombardier actually controlled the aircraft flight over the target area. A minimum proficiency standard of 22% bombs on target standard was required of trainees. 1,582 AT 11s were ordered by the U.S. Army Air Force between 1941 and 1945, of which 36 were modified as AT 11A navigational trainers. Some Kansans were outfitted with two 30 caliber machine guns for aerial gunnery instruction. Virtually 90% of more than 45,000 United States Army Air Force bombardiers trained in the AT 11 Kansan. One might conclude that without this little flying workhorse, compliments of Mr. Walter Beach and his wife, Miss Olive Ann Beach, and their Beach Aircraft Company, the course of World War II might have been dramatically different. 900 wartime production Beach military AT-7, AT-11, and C-45B and C-45F aircraft were remanufactured by Beach for the United States Air Force between 1951 and 55 and became C-45G or C-45H models. 
process included the use of new fuselages, center sections, and landing gear combined with reconditioned engines, outer wings, and tail sections. This resulted in a new zero-time aircraft that resembled the civil D-18S of the time. During World War II, Beach Aircraft built many variants of the Model 18 for the U.S. military to be used in various utility and transport roles. Additionally, the aircraft were used for training multi-engine pilots, instrument pilots, navigators, bombardiers, and gunners. Before being rebuilt, the aircraft on display was an AT-11. Following its United States Air Force service, in December 1960, the C-45H on display was donated, repainted in U.S. Navy colors by Twin Beach 18 Society Life member Morton Lester. This LM-1 was the first King Air to be used by the United States Army, and it was donated by Dynamic Aviation. Ordered in 1966 and delivered in 1967, LM-1 is the first King Air purpose-built for the United States military. Purpose-built for the Army, the U-21 is an unpressurized cargo door-equipped version of the standard civilian King Air. 162 unpressurized U-21s were supplied to the Army in several different variants. The U-21 served actively around the world, with one reconnaissance version being downed during the Vietnam conflict. In 1996, Dynamic Aviation purchased the U.S. Army's remaining fleet of 124 Beechcraft U-21s. Soon after the purchase, Dynamic Aviation put these versatile aircraft to work in various business segments including fire management, sterile insect technique, aerial application, training, and airborne data acquisition. Starting in 2004, Dynamic Aviation outfitted the U-21 for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions, and the aircraft continues to significantly contribute to our nation's defense. With over 600,000 total King Air flight hours and counting, this type has proven to be the backbone for flight services at Dynamic Aviation. At the time I was at the museum when I was shooting this tour video, I couldn't find any information on this turbine-powered uh, bonanza. So this is what we call audience participation time in the video. Here's your chance to, well for one, just enjoy this beautiful aircraft, but also feel free to look it up and see what information you can find about it. And let me know in the comments section below. Also, please make sure you like and subscribe so you catch all my future videos. The T-34C aircraft is an unpressurized two-place tandem cockpit low-wing single-engine monoplane. The aircraft is powered by a model PT-6A-25 turboprop engine manufactured by Pratt & Whitney Aircraft of Canada. The T-34C is to provide primary flight training for student pilots attached to the Chief of Naval Air Training. The T-34 Mentor began as a private venture designed by Walter Beach shortly after World War II. Beach felt that there was a market for a military trainer based on the Model 35 Bonanza which he had been flying for about a year. The last Turbo Mentor rolled off the production line in 1990. The bubble canopy gives great visibility in all directions making for a very dramatic difference from the usual cabin of the civilian aircraft. It has a beautiful power on stall that takes just a little extra back stick to break and it falls through nice and level through the horizon if the stall is coordinated. The power off stall is quite docile also, but there is practically no buffet before the stall to warn the pilot. It's not unusual to end up between 60 and 90 degree bank angle coming out of a power off stall, but it is hardly noticeable due to the plane's awesome roll rate back to level. Steep turns are effortless in this quick aircraft as the plane settles right in at 60 degree angle of bank. This T-34 Mentor is currently on loan to the museum from the Department of the Navy National Naval Aviation Museum. 